it's a clapped out 318 that was locked up with a two barrel it's got one exhaust pipe it's a hoopty jump in this thing and see what it'll do Yep, it's on a trailer behind Minty. It followed me home, but I don't want to bring it all the way home yet. This thing was full of spiders and critters and all kinds of things that want to bite me. So I threw some bug bomb, here we go. I threw a bunch of bug bombs in it before I left. And then uh, we're gonna go ahead and blow out the engine bay. But let's just go ahead and do a walkthrough around this thing and show you what we got here. So this is, this is the light green metallic 1968 Dodge Charger, obviously. Yeah, XP29F, which F is 318. So it's a 318 car. What else can we see on the outside? Well, I can see that the turn signal holes have been knocked out, which means this was a light package car. If that was solid across here, then it would have been a standard package, non-light package, which also SE cars, actually no, SE wasn't available to 69, take that back, but you could still get all the same options. So we have the light package. We have an adjustable mirror. Well, let's see, what else we got here? See, we have the wood grain steering wheel, which that's not standard. So we have light package, we have wood grain wheel. Um, we got an AM radio. This was an AC car. You can see by the dash. It's got the controls up top for AC and it's got the dash for the AC vents both in the corners and in the center, which I actually prefer that because if you do vintage air, it's already set up for it. If you, if you didn't have that and you went with vintage air, then you would just have these stupid little uh, AC, da AC vents on the underside of the dash. And some of you guys are like, it's a muscle car. Why do you need AC? <laughs> it is a... How hot does it get here, Derek? 115 plus? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and we drive these bitches. So yes, these are AC cars. What else we got here? I'm going to say that happened after the car was parked. So that's probably from just being shoved around. We got a racing Moroso sticker there. See, and in 68, people were smart enough to know that this is where the fuel went. In 69, they actually put fuel there. So that way, you know, people will know where, you know, where the fuel goes. You want to grab a long skinny screwdriver, Derek, out of the toolbox in there? See, in 68, they have the light up round side markers, which 
I actually really like that. I think it looks cool. And we also have the bullet charger tail lights, which I could go either way. I can go 68 or 69 tail lights, but 68s are really cool at night. But then also 69s are really cool at night, and 69s do fill the tail panel better. But the 68 tail pan, the tail lights are pretty freaking cool. Um, that is not standard. So someone has added that. See, also in 68, you have the black push buttons for the doorknobs. In 69 and 70, they went chrome. Again, 68 side marker. Now, one thing, this does have a 69 fender on it. We can see that it's originally yellow underneath this when the original color was light green. What else we got going on inside here? See, we're right outside Busy Road. So we got a buddy seat. So now it's the, these seats are standard in 68. So 68, 69, these seats are standard. You could have gotten a non, you could have deleted the buddy seat or got a console. We've got a big old hole cut in the floor pan because this car was originally an automatic on the column. You can see the steering column there, and you can see where it used to have the knob. Someone has removed that, and they've added the a three or a four speed. We can tell if it has if it has three levers on it, it's a four speed. If it's only got two, it's a three speed, and that would be a three speed. So that is a three speed manual transmission. Let's see, we still got the automatic brake pedal down there. So we got the clutch pedal with the automatic brake pedal. One thing cool about 68s is you got this little medallion there. Now, you know, every year with production cars, they find a way to cut costs. And from 68 to 69, one of the things to cut costs was to remove the medallion. So 68 was the only year you would see that medallion there. Another thing on 68s is you have the vertical, uh, oh, I guess the texture, the gills, the grills, the you have vertical lines on the dash bezels. So, and on 69 and 70, it was more of a textured. And then if it was the SC, it was wood grain. So you'd have wood grain. And then if it was a 70 RT, it would be wood grain, standard. So we have manual crank windows. Actually, the dash pads in this car are pretty dang decent. See that, Derek? See the dash yeah. pads in this thing? Oh, yeah, they are. Or, I mean, not dash pad, but the door panels. The door oh, panels yeah. are pretty deep. Or the door pads. They are. Up there. Excuse me. Yeah, Brain upper, fart. Upper. Yeah. So, what kind of critters are going to jump off of this? None? Okay, good. All right. All right. Let's go and check out the trunk. Derek got it popped open. The trunk lid a little beat up. But, wow, look at that trunk panel. That is pretty dang solid, isn't it, Derek? Yeah. But that right there is the reason I would say this car was parked. It's missing the shock tower. There's no shock tower in there. See? There's a shock, but there's no shock tower. 66 through 70 B-body Mopars had a really crappy shock tower. I mean, it was just a chintzy piece of fleet sheet metal that had a couple, you know, tack welds, and it was really crappy. And it's just a C-channel piece of sheet metal. So you know it goes, bink, breaks off, goes through the trunk pan, breaks it, falls out, whatever. So I'm assuming that is why the car was parked, is because the rear shock tower broke out of it. Let's go ahead and check out under the hood, Derek. What do you think? All right, you're a Mopar guy, you know this. Yeah, we're gonna go ahead and pop this up and see what we've got here. Well, it is an AC car, so it's gonna have the standard 26 inch radiator. It's not the real thick one like you know the Hemis and 440 cars would have, but it's got the width to it. It's got the it's got the width, but not the girth. And we've got a 318, which I'm assuming. I don't know if this is a numbers motor, but I'm assuming it's still a 318 because it's got the two barrel intake manifold. If you look down here, go ahead, Derek. 
If you look down here, Derek, we got a W on the intake manifold, which stands for wheelie fast. <laughs> Still has the fender tag. We have power drum brakes. I know that because it has the standard brake booster and it has the drum brake master. And uh, they have added the speed holes to the air cleaner so you can see all the speed holes there. Let's see what's under this thing. Well, the carburetor's been taped up, so that's good. So there's less critters living in the carburetor. But you can see the green under the hood, and someone has covered it with black. I hate it when they cover over original paint with a black engine bay, because it just makes it seem like Ford and Mustang, or Ford and uh, Chevy, because that's what they did. They had black engine bays. That's one of the cool things about Mopars is when you pop the hood, you still see the body color. But uh, under here, it looks fairly complete. Like, the only thing it looks like it may be missing, which is weird, is part of the AC controls. There's a hole in the firewall over there. You can see part of the AC controls is missing. But it still has the blower motor and the rest of it. And that's the uh, heater core. Oh, you can also see another option here. We got the three-speed wiper motor, which will then have a three-speed switch on the dash because there was a two-speed switch and a three-speed switch. So it being a three-speed, we know it's got a three-speed uh, switch on the dash. Um, looks like it's missing the uh, fan shroud, but fairly complete car. Power steering, so yeah, we got power steering. We got, this actually has uh, is this the Saginaw? Yes. Saginaw power steering pump, the Mopar box. And, uh, yeah. One thing, though, is, uh, come over here, Derek. We'll switch your sides. One thing I don't like that I see, there's no spark plugs on this side of the engine. Is there spark plugs on the other side? Yeah. Okay, so it has spark plugs on this side but no spark plugs on that side. How long has that not had spark plugs in it? That kind of worries me a little bit. Is this engine gonna turn over? I would like to get this thing running. A running vehicle is a very more useful vehicle than a non-running vehicle. Plus, it's got three speed in it. So we can bang tree gears. All right, well, pretty solid car. Look. California 1984. See? Just a typical lower rear valence and quarter rod. But this thing is actually super solid for, I mean, the back window, it's not bad. You can tell it needs to be needs some metal work because I see a little bit of gap there. But uh, overall, this charger in pretty darn good condition being it's been sitting since night. This car has been sitting longer than I've been alive. We're gonna start washing all the critters and stuff and all the poop and everything out of it because I'd rather it be in their drains than in front of my house. Then I'll have to clean it up.
All right, the rain kind of ruined our fun for a minute. Just out of nowhere, we had a cloud come in and kind of spoil the moment. But it's petered off now, and if this engine's gonna run, it needs to be able to spin over first. And yesterday, I sprayed a little PB blaster down the spark plug holes that were open. So we're gonna go ahead and just squirt some more in there. Look at that accuracy. Long distance. Wow, right in the hole. I get this one from here. Oh wow. That's one of those helicopter planes that has the blades that can go like this and then they like this. That's cool. Let's see if this crank will even turn. If it will turn, there is some hope that it will run. If it don't, then not likely. Ugh, stupid fans in my way. Ugh. Well, that's not good news. I think I can get a little more leverage on this thing if I pull the fan out of the way, so that's what I'm gonna do. battery and see if we can't get it to uh crank over that's how we got the el camino to fire up oh yeah that's right so all right we got a battery in place i got a charger on it i think this battery is good so we're gonna go ahead and jump the starter relay see if we can't get this motor to mix to free up It's rotating. I wonder what else electrical works in this thing. We just saturated the inner fender with a PB blaster. <laughs> All right, we're gonna have to make a parts store run. This right here will fit right in there. That's gonna be our gas can because we don't need to go buy a brand. Ooh. Here's a fresh Black Widow. That wasn't there a minute ago. And it's raining again. But now I'm afraid to put my hands anywhere. Let's see uh, what kind of mess we got under here. Oh, well, we got a rag, we got tape. Okay, so the plan is the throttle stuck? Ah, oh, dang it. Dang it. You knew that was going to happen. Let's see if we can't free. the throttle up. Come on. Ugh, there it goes. It just needed some lube. There we go. Look at that snap action now. Okay. We got no wire hooked. Oh wait, what's this? <laughs> Where did this go to? Okay, oh. we got some hackery going on here. Yep. So that would be our coil. Let's see. Yeah. 39 year old duct tape. Oh no, wait. Oh no, wait. No, wait. Okay. They had that running right to the battery. So that would be the power to the coil and this would have gone to yep right there i see it the points i don't doubt these points are any good of course you never know the ones on the el camino were good Ooh, that doesn't look good and we got electrical tape inside there from a frayed wire okay ah. I doubt that's gonna work. I got another old distributor here that I pulled out of my stash. This is also points. So maybe 
this one is still good. It still has the wire on it with the lead. The, uh, but I think we're just gonna rob the guts out of this one and put it into that one. And we're gonna go ahead and pull that distributor so that way we can stick the primer down there and prime it. And then, uh, but since it rotates, I think I've also got a small block fuel pump for this thing. So we'll put the fuel pump in it. We'll uh, change the points, plugs. And I think I've got another carburetor. So we might be able to hear this sucker run today. You know what? Let's take a picture of where the distributor is pointed at right now. So that way when we put it back in, we can just put it back in the same spot. When you're tearing apart cars, pictures will do wonders. You might not think so at the moment, but trust me, later when you're putting the car, to, putting the car together, it will. Before pulling distributor on a grungy ass old car, Make sure you blow out around it first. Knock all the dirt and debris out. Because when you pull the distributor, stuff's going to fall in it. Ugh, here we go. This thing spins decent. We're going to put this one back in, but we're going to clean it up. And probably just, we're just going to clean those contacts. We'll replace that wire. And you never know. That, point, that condenser might be good. So... I think we will uh, just replace the wire. This thing definitely needs to get cleaned out. I tried to pull the drive gear out of the block, you know, which is attached to which is attached to the camshaft, which spins the distributor and also spins the oil pump. I was gonna pull it out so I can prime the engine on the oil pump, but I could get it like half of the way out and then it just would not come out anymore. So something's hanging it up. It's probably a burr or maybe some uh, caked up, uh, gunked up oil. Something is holding it up where I couldn't get it out. So you know what, once the thing fires up, within a couple seconds, it will have oil pressure. So not worry about it. I'm going to go ahead and plop this guy back in where it was sitting. I know because I took a picture of where the rotor was aiming at. So it should fire back up just like that. And then my ground wire for the distributor, or for the coil, I mean, will sit right there. Oh, now I gotta find a nut for it, it's missing. And before we get new spark plugs, you know, crammed into the cylinder head, I thought it probably better go ahead and tap out the threads in the cylinder heads because they were pretty rusty. There was no plugs in them for who knows how long. I have tasked Derek with bolting the fuel pump on. So if the fuel pump doesn't work, we will get our damn it Derek moment. I'm gonna nail it. He's concentrating. That will go like that. That will go like that. I'll put a little bit there. And we will call fuel system done. We're, I'm gonna figure out where number one needs to be at on the rotor. I'm gonna spin the engine around and when my finger goes poof over the number one hole, that means that one's on the compression stroke. So here we go. Oh, yeah, I guess it helps when it has power, huh? All right, that is compression stroke. What does it look like on the timing mark? Oh shit, that's like almost right on zero. So yeah, that's good. All right, so they got number one pointed at number two. So it doesn't matter as long as the firing order is correct. So just have to keep note that number two or number one starts over there. And then we just have to route our wires from that. This cap and wires came off of a diplomat that was in the junkyard. So this, is, and this was stuff was brand new. So of course we robbed it. All right, this carburetor I'm positive needs rebuilt, but uh, we're just gonna go ahead and uh, roll with it. Raise the idle a little bit. It's hard to get a screwdriver in there. All right, Derek, spray some juice in there. Ready? 
Let's see what happened. It's been sitting since 1984. Here's the coil wire. Shove it in the battery terminal. All right. Hmm. Let's see if we're getting spark. Ugh. Ready? Elmo Sparky. Huh. I should have just changed the points because it was actually poor contact on the points, but now I'm getting grounding. So I wiggled it around to try and get a little bit to knock off some of the rust on the points. And it's working now. So I think we're just gonna try it out instead of changing it. So it was not the condenser, it was actually just rusty points. Nice healthy squirt. Get the thing spinning. See if I'm getting some spark here. If I just spot to ground it. And it's not working again. Oh son of a Alright, well, I found another distributor that looks like it has brand new points in it, so so I swapped the points, swapped the condenser made sure it's all grounding out correctly i thought i could cheat it and not replace anything but uh it was garbage it was so rusty the contacts were bad so let's go ahead and see what we got now okay that is sparky sparky i will go with that <sighs> here you go come on baby light off That sounded like it wanted to do something. Let's put a little bit of timing in it. Try again. That almost wanted to go. Coil getting hot? Nope, not yet. Well, it ran for a little bit. I wonder if it's getting fuel. I think we need to let that power cable uh, cool off. It's a little warm, but it ran and it idled for a minute. Well, maybe like 20 seconds, but it ran. Ah, it just won't run very long. Must just be that carburetor must be junk and it's just not getting any fuel. Of course we know that carburetor's junk. anywhere though but it must just not be getting any fuel but it does run yeah I pulled the old two barrel off I was just curious if it was savable and uh I think I can just blow this thing out with brake cleaner bolt it back together and it'll fire up and run and drive it's really not that bad do that with your 50 year old 2024 Dodge Challenger Charger. Bet it won't happen. So we're gonna go ahead and continue taking this thing apart, clean her out, 
and just bolt it back together. Not even any new gaskets or anything. This is either going to work or I'm going to look like a chump. All right, here's the test. Carburetor is bolted back on. The ballast resistor is actually wired up now. It does work. I just checked it. The uh, just need to prime it over. See if we can't fill those bowls with the uh, or not bowls, but bowl uh, singular because it is a two barrel carburetor. Hook up my jumper wire, jump the relay and see if this old girl will actually fire up an idle. If it will, should just go ahead and put coolant in it. I'm running out of starter fluid. Hopefully it picks up fuel quick. <laughs> It's running! That is really quiet. There's not even a muffler on one side of the engine and it's so freaking quiet. Oh, and there it goes. Oh, man. It's failing me. No! Come on. Ah. Oh, dang it. It's still spinning. We have flooded out. Okay, so the uh, needle and seat may need replaced. This thing might actually be pretty good. I think the piston rings might actually come back to life and seat up a little bit because the uh, blow-by has already gone down a little bit from what it was last night. <laughs> And just like that, it's running again. Look at that, the blow by's almost gone already. Oh, yeah. Check it out, the blow by is even less now. The charger is feeling itself. I had to fire it up and show Derek because he just showed up. What do you think, Derek? Uh, sounds good, man. Yeah. Nice, nice cruiser. It's so quiet, huh? Look, it's not even smoking anymore. Self-healing. Maybe we can get the driving portion of it completed. Yeah, I seriously doubt that master cylinder is even gonna work. It's, you know, it's old, it's crusty, it's junk, and most likely it is empty. You know what, let's see. Ooh, that's dry as a bone. You know what, Derek? Let me hit the brake pedal on this thing. Why don't you hit the brake pedal, see if it, see if it does anything. Maybe we can just put fluid in this and it'll work. Seriously doubt it. It's hard as a rock. Oh, it's a rock hard? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's junk. We got some parts, courtesy of Napa. Now, I had this guy here. This is for disc brakes. We do not have disc brakes. But I had this guy, and it's the four bolt, so we're going to use it. Do not care. It will work. But we've got some belts. See if we can't get the power steering working. We've got some brake hoses, wheel cylinder, and power steering fluid, and brake fluid. Let's see if we can get this thing driving. Derek's got her up in the air. Time for me to get that master cylinder off of it. All right, let's go ahead and grab some goodies right here. And by goodies, I mean American tools. We can go ahead and get these American parts off of here and replace them with China and Mexico. <laughs> now this is not a super rusty car, so if you want to preserve your brake lines that are here, which these look nice and solid. Yeah, they're brown, but they're just patinaed. So 
if I want to save them without twisting or splitting or breaking them, you got to heat up the fitting, which will break the rust bond on the master cylinder. All right, let's give it a shot. Ah, that was pretty easy. We knocked that spider out of his hole. He did, oh, they're all falling out. All kinds of spiders crawling out of that thing. There it goes. Oh, spider alert, spider alert. So I got the wrong but replacement master cylinder because that's what I've got and that's what I'm gonna use. Derek's gonna go ahead and do the belts right now while I go ahead and finish this guy. Get a bolt in place, go ahead Derek. We're just gonna see if we can hit the road with the old brake hoses and the old wheel cylinders. Being responsible. Derek, you wanna hit the brake pedal? Yeah. Down. Up. Down. So I tried to cheat it. Wouldn't work. Couldn't bleed it. Cla lines are clogged. Slave cylinders clogged. Something's clogged, so. Oh, there we go, Derek. Now we're getting some fluid flow. There was some crap stuck in the brake line. Yep, see now it's dripping. Ah, dang it, I just created more work for myself. Actually, didn't create more work, I most likely would have had to do it anyway. But, if you look, there's a piece of brake line stuck on the old hose. Yep, it tore in half. And I even heated it and everything, but it was just paper thin and broke. So, now I have to make an entire new brake line. All right, time to pull the brake line. And this is the bitch one. It goes all the way across the back of the engine to the distribution block. All right. You suck. All right, well, normally I actually spend the time to duplicate a brake line really nice, but uh, on this guy, I don't really care. So, I'm just going to quickly duplicate this just by overlapping, and it will still be really close. So there is my quickly duplicated brake line. What was that? Five minutes, Derek? So this will be good enough to fit in place. So then hopefully we will have front brakes to do burnouts with with all of 100 horsepowers of 318. Now we got to get this thing in without screwing it up. Snake it back. In there. little sucker. All right, now we are back to where we were a half hour ago. You know what, I shouldn't be doing that with my uh, Cornwell tool because my Cornwell dealer watches this. So we'll do it with the Chinese one. Okay, there we go. John didn't see that. Ah, stupid China. 10 millimeter crap. I'm gonna get a stupid 10 millimeter. Down. Aha, fluid. Up, down.
up, down. This is why you never go sticking your fingers behind wheels. have brake pedal make sure it's out of gear we need to see if this clutch works I went ahead and ran a couple jumper wires just like I did on that charger over there Transmission works. Transmission, I guess the clutch kind of works. It's, it's really, really weak, but uh, maybe it's good enough for a test drive. Oh. I think first is food time. I am starving. What do you think of my custom upholstery, door, Derek? <laughs> so that way I don't get a spring up the ass. There is like no meat left in the seat. Uh, here we go. Uh, oh. Head out for our maiden voyage since 1984. Uh, the door did shut. What the hell? All right, now we're gonna head out for our maiden voyage. Get my ignition wires hooked up. We're gonna hot wire this thing. All right, now. <laughs> All right, if this is a three speed, this should be reversed. Onward we go! Have I got a flat tire? Oh. Oh. Well, that was a short trip. Holy crap, tire's so freaking old. <laughs> It just started falling apart in the short feet we went. Wow. And fire in the hole. It's so quiet. All right. So last time we had a tire just shred to pieces in like three feet. <laughs> Ready, Derek? I'll come back and get you. Aha. In case stuff falls into the falls in my eyes. Well, that was short. <laughs> Dang it. Round two.
I'm just gonna crank it for a while to get fuel. Oh. Helps if it's out of gear. So, uh, it was out of gas. Come on, baby, I just wanna go for a drive. You've been dead longer than I've been alive. Come on. Round four. I think it's gonna work this time. Ooh, I have I have power steering. It's 1984. <laughs> oh, it's so good. Steering works. Of course, the speedometer wasn't because it's not hooked up, but this thing has been dead for a long time and now it's alive. Now let's go back and get Derek. He deserves to ride in this thing too. Shall we even try second gear? Oh, ho, ho. what about third? Oh, we have all the. Oh, this thing actually has a little bit of torque. Ooh, do we have brakes? Whoa. Oh, I guess I should have checked that earlier. That is sketchy as shit. Jump in, Derek. What do you think, Derek? Oh, it's not. It's good. quiet, isn't it? Turns like a kitten. The freaking transmission's louder than the engine. <laughs> and the power steering works. This is technically, oh, the first time I hit the brake pedal, it was whoa, 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 whoa. So yeah, hopefully nobody darts out in front of me. Oh yeah, we're gonna grab high gear. Whoa. Oh, it's probably got a little bit too much timing in it. It actually accelerates in very cold crap. Ooh, that's, ugh. Come on. Give me eight. Give me eight. There we go. Oh, that's right. The three speeds. The first gear is non-synchronized. I forgot about that. Yeah, so first gear on a three speed, no synchros. One more 1968 Dodge Charger pulled from the weeds and saved from decapitation. It is a runner and driver now. I wish the gauges worked, but they don't. But it's actually not that much of a pig as I was. I was thinking it was gonna be totally gutless. Even this clapped out 318 is way stronger than a brand new Slant 6. Well, what do you think of this thing going down the road, huh? Oh, it thing's so good. It probably bounces like crazy because there's no rear shocks, huh? get it back before we run out of gas and we have no idea what the gauges are doing it could be running hot or we don't even know but it does need a little bit less timing and then we may be able to take this thing out and see if it spins tires and done
All right, dude, high five, man, it worked. <laughs> well, this thing hasn't driven in so long and it went around the block, what, four times? Yeah. That's a successful first test drive. You remember, right outside my neighborhood, I live in the city, right outside my neighborhood is one, is a, one of the busiest roads. So it's not like we can take this thing out there and get some speed on it. Plus, it uh, needs, a t needs some fine tweaking. Especially some brakes. The brakes on this thing right now are super sketch. So on a busy public road, yeah, no. And with the six wide public, six six lane wide public road, no. <laughs> All right, let's do some tweaking. Or no, no, not in the bad way, the good way, mechanical tweaking. Derek vacuumed out the floors. We can actually see what they look like in here. And yeah, there's a few holes in the front and the back, so. It needs floors, but it's got this big ass dent right here. And I'm thinking if we pull this rear seat and give it some foot leverage action, it might go <laughs> kind of curious. Plus we need to vacuum out the back seat area. So Derek, why don't you go to the other side and tilt that seat forward. Yeah. He's already vacuumed out in front of the rear seat. Oh, you know what? Watch your fingers. There might still be some. Uh, grab some gloves. There you go. Oh, it's not that bad. Okay, so the rear seat's been out of this thing before. Oh, wait, yep. It's a good thing we used our gloves. There's a black widow right there. Shit. Grab the brake cleaner. Is it alive? Right. Let's see if it's alive. Let's get a close up on it. Oh yeah, it's moving. It's alive. It won't be. All right, let's see if this quarter will push out a little bit. I can't get my whole foot in there. Like it did something. Well, a little bit. But yeah, see, it's crunched right here. So it swung out a little bit, huh? Yeah. It looks like 10% better. All right, now we put all this crap back in. Restored. And like. 95% Black Widow free. You didn't think I was just gonna leave this with a simple drive around the neighborhood, did you? No. So I got to thinking, we need to race this 68 Charger against something. It hasn't seen the streets since 1984. And what a way to bring it back to the streets, but with a race. I had to think about this though, because it's a clapped out 318 that was locked up with a two barrel. It's got one exhaust pipe. It's pretty clapped out. It's a hoopty. What would be comparable? And I'm like, you know what? We will just take Minty with the trailer on it that brought it here is a clapped out 318 two barrel charger faster than a 360 d100 pickup with the trailer toolbox and everything in the back i was like that would probably be a pretty fair race and my competition here is damn it derek have you ever drag raced derek yeah oh you have okay so you're not a virgin to drag racing okay all right i thought he had never raced anything before so you're just gonna stall it up a little bit. We're gonna throw a sodi can in the air and when it hits the ground, it's takeoff time. But we gotta do a little maintenance for this uh, charger first. So go ahead and let's get this hood popped up. Go ahead and top off the radiator, Derek, because it does leak a little. Actually, yeah, you can see the pull of water on the ground right there. And that's just typical old freeze plugs 
and but we gotta do a little tuning up for racing so i've got my tune-up tool here the uh float likes to stick so let me get my race tune on here all right derek i think i got my race tune in Derek's putting straight water in it, you know, because we can't run antifreeze on the drag strip. And what we have here is a freshly new paved street with new industrial buildings on both sides in Mexico. No, just kidding. Wow, those trains are noisy. Okay. Okay. The charger is ready to race. Hold on. Throw more weight on your end. <laughs> All right, we'll line them up. Whoa. Okay, the door opens now. That's new. Okay, door is closed now. All right. Let me go line up to Derek and do my starting procedure here. I don't really know how which which way this is gonna go. tune came out. This may be the shortest race ever. Automatic win on Minty's end. Steering wheel's automatically turning. That means the steering that means the steering box needs rebuilt. Here we go. Derek screwed up. Damn it, Derek. And he, is it still running? Okay. It's so freaking quiet. Derek is driving it right. 
not doing too half bad. It's scratch and tire first gear. No, it's spin and tire first gear, scratch and tire second gear. Not half bad. Alright, so we're gonna do a round three. And I want you, I'm gonna read you two race, okay? So here. Three. Charger is victorious. Of course, you know, Derek is kind of crutched. For one, it's damn it, Derek. Two, he has a truck with a trailer. Three, it's damn it, Derek. All right, let's see what this baby can do. Okay, Derek, how does it feel to lose to a clapped out 318 two barrel charger? Well, I don't know, this thing's heavy. It has a, tra tra a trailer on the back, so of course it's gonna lose. You know you left probably like two seconds late in the first two runs where I actually had to tell you to go? I wasn't let you win anyway. <laughs> Bullshit. You're so full of excuses, Derek. Trailer's heavy. You're going to let me win. All right. Well, we need to load this thing up. And surprisingly, it still runs and still runs good. <laughs> it's got all kinds of horsey powers. Well, except we're really overheating now. Yep. We're going to go ahead and let this one sit. Oh, did we finally blow the freeze plug out of it? Okay, so the leaky freeze plug, it might have just finally blown out. Oh, well. Worth it! <laughs> All right, see you guys later. We got to load these things up. I load this thing. Where's keys at, Derek? Oh, this thing might be a sure grip, Derek. Look, it's got two tracks. Yeah. <laughs> Bonus. It's got two number 11s. Or no, it's got one set of number 11s. There you go. But look, that is like... Oh, we're still going. We're still going. We're still going. And that's about petered out there. So, what is that about? Maybe 80 feet? Not bad for a hunk of junk that hasn't run in 39 years. Like the spinning tires, Walter? Oh yeah, baby. <laughs>